Hello, happy Saturday. How's it going? <laughs> How are you guys? I'm still thrown off by the week because we only had one other stream. It's funny how easy you can get used to something, isn't it? <laughs> well, um, this I've cut out two pairs of shorts because I feel like this is a really fast sew. And I made a prototype the other day for my daughter, just kind of like spontaneously, and um, made them up and they were really quick to sew. So, you know, and, I'm, and we're gonna use French seams and binding, so. I feel like this is a really good pattern, especially if you have uh, kids in your life and you need some summer shorts and you have some small pieces of fabric. So this is a really good go-to pattern for that. Um, I'm just gonna check a few things, make sure everything's working. Let me know if you can hear me okay and see me okay and the lighting's okay. I kind of toned down the orange a little because it's kind of bright. Um, I think it looks pretty good, so. Alrighty. Cool, well, um, I also did a, um, a little photo collage of the prototype that, pair that I made and tried them on my daughter and had her take a couple pictures. She really liked them, which, you know, it what made me really happy because I was like, this is kind of style short she buys. I think she'd like these and I, and you know, I said, can I make these for you? And then she, she liked my fabric choice. Um, she said orange, yellow, fun colors, and that's what I picked. And hi, Liza, how's it going? And um, I tried, I sewed a pair for her. I'll show you, let's see, where is it? I think it's way at the bottom of my list here. Oh, here it is. I have to look around my camera to see it. You can't, um, you can't hear me? Why can't you hear me? Let's see. Is that better? That's not the mic though. Oh, oh, I know, I know. I know why, because I didn't have the microphone on the image. So sorry about that. Thank you for telling me that, Brooke. Okay, so here, let me, um, let me, uh, ooh, I don't think I can do that right now. All right, am I there now? I think what it is is um, I didn't layer, I put the microphone layer on that image layer. So sorry about that. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, so that picture I was showing you. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Cricket! My daughter's here. How's it going? I just showed pictures of you. So um, that picture you can see, she has the waistband rolled down one, and so I'm modifying this pair here so she won't have to do that, so then they won't pull weirdly in the back because they, they kind of created some drag lines when she rolls it down. And um, that, the fabrics I used for her pair of trial shorts are pretty different in weight from each other. Like the white is a little lighter weight, the black is um, covered in embroidery. It's really hard to see, uh, so it's a little heavier. So, so anyway, these are going to be really lightweight. They're rayon, and um, <laughs> um, I'm frozen now. Are you telling? Really? I'm not frozen on my screen. Let's see. Let me look on the. Am I having all kinds of trouble today? It doesn't look frozen for me on there. Wow. Should I just restart my stream? Maybe I should restart the stream. Will that be better, you guys? Hi, Rachel. Am I still frozen for you, Marsha? 
Tell me, tell me, am I frozen or not? I'm gonna lick my phone. <laughs> Why am I having trouble today? Things have been going so well. Okay, you're, I'm okay, okay. Why was it frozen? Shoot, let's just start sewing. It's way easier. Um, not enough, it just looked like you when you had the image up. Huh, interesting. Okay. Could be an internet issue for someone. You refreshed. Okay, 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 okay. Cool. Cool, thank you. Let's just start sewing, shall we? All right, so here we're making the City Gym Shorts by um, the free pattern from Pearl Soho. And you can download it on their website. I showed you in the cutting video where to go because someone was having trouble finding it. But if you go to Pearl Soho's website and just search City Gym Shorts, you should be able to find two separate pairs. The um, most recent pair they posted are lined. Pug duty calls. <laughs> Thanks, Cricket. <laughs> exactly. Pug duty is a real duty at my house. <laughs> Pug puppies, man. Um, so if you go to their website, search City Gym Shorts, you will see a lined pair, and I think it's called Canberra. That's the fabric they used. And the... Um, the chat lags a bit for you to see the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then compared to us, yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, it's okay. it's hard to get the, the lag, like um, I have to wait for you guys to see me. In Twitch, it's like a two or three second delay. In YouTube, I think it's about eight to 10, which is quite a bit if I'm asking you a question, you know, because what am I supposed to do to stand there? So yeah, go to the Pearl Soho website, look at the free patterns, or search in their search bar, City Gym Shorts, it's free. I'm not promoted by them. Yeah, I think they, like Cricket was thinking she would use them as a pair of sleep shorts. <laughs> I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Cricket know you say goodbye, Eliza. <laughs> um, they're very similar, in my opinion, to the Lakeside Pajamas. I can't remember if the lakeside pajamas, pajamas just overlap on the sides though, and they're not stitched down. Um, I haven't made them for a while. I have a pair. Yeah, she, yeah, so I gave them to Cricut, and she was like, oh, okay. And then she put them on, and then it sounds like she slept in them, and then she wore them the next day. So <laughs> I'll show you one more picture, but you're not gonna hear me, okay? So just a second, I'm gonna show you the picture of her wearing them so you can see the difference on them. So you can see, like she has the waistband folded down. She'd been wore wearing them a lot, so the fat, the front fabric got a little wrinkly, um, but they seem to fit fit good. And they're not really, really short, which I was pretty surprised to to see because they look like they could be. So, anywho, here's a few views of them. But it's a great stash busting thing. Um, I'm not doing things too differently than the um, pattern suggests. Just uh, the waistband's probably the biggest thing I'm gonna do differently. Hello, Malin. Um, Marsha, I wouldn't, I mean, you could use knit fabric, actually. I'm using a woven, they are woven shorts. Good morning, Leah. The red cottage in the woods. <laughs> you could use knit fabric. They may, like, uh, for the waistband, um, as long as the knit's not too bulky. You might find if the knit's really bulky that the it won't draw up the elastic enough. You know, anytime there's fabric. In fact, that's why I'm making the change I am on this waistband because it's basically four layers of fabric. So. <laughs> Love you, honey. <laughs> hey, they wanna hear things like that. They wanna know, like when I told them I took picture of myself in my pants and then I didn't take them off for the rest of the day and then I wore them the next day, they were like, sold! I'm gonna buy a pair of those. So that's a good testament. <laughs> There's no judgment here. <laughs> All right, I have to turn my air conditioning on, you guys. Just a second, okay? I turned it on, but it didn't kick on, so. And, um... The rest of the building isn't here, so the I tend to benefit from the air conditioning, and it's not on, so. All right, so I'm gonna do French seams. Um, if you haven't cut your pair out, I would add a little extra to the seam allowance on the rise and on the inseam. 
maybe like add three eighths of an inch because there's only a quarter inch seam allowance. Crazy, right? Like it's kind of crazy that there's only a quarter inch seam allowance in my opinion. My, uh, Cause you know me, I always want quarter inch seam allowance, but on uh, clothing, you don't really see it in the construction bits. And I'm gonna do French seams. So <clears throat> you need a little bit more than a quarter inch for French seams, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So I changed my thread and I hadn't sewn yet, so I'm just gonna check it. Make sure all is well before I do. All right, let's do it. So I'm gonna do French seams because um, there's only four seams that you need to do. I'm gonna use itty bitty seam allowance because I don't have very much. I have a feeling that my needle and my thread is a little heavy for this fabric. Thanks, Diorama. I know, it's pretty cool, huh? They're not for me. But it, when I saw it, I was like, you know what? I think she'd like this. So I'm, I'm doing about an eighth of an inch seam allowance right now. Quarter inch is, is pretty small, especially in a high stress area like a, a rise. So that's why I would suggest maybe just adding, add a little bit right there. Um, I'm gonna clip this curve as well, very carefully since my seam allowance is so small. I'm just gonna do the curve. That way it won't stress right there. Yay, Pam, welcome. <laughs> it's okay, you don't have to chat. You can just join us, say hello occasionally. Um, I'm gonna set those aside, I'm gonna do the other ones and then I'm gonna iron them for the next step. So yeah, everyone's a little shy at first about the chatting and I totally get it, but it, there is, um, there are some benefits, you know, you can kind of ask people questions like what sewing machine they use or what stiffener they, or uh, interfacing they like, stuff like that. It's nice to see other opinions, you know, I'm not the only one. I have my opinions, but it's really, my opinions are just personal. I know what I like and what works for me, but other people like totally different things. And I like seeing, I like seeing what you guys like, you know, I learn a lot. Did you, someone commented on the uh, cutting video that there is a, a person who sews on PBS and has a pattern company or maybe a, a business where they sell things. I can't remember the name of them, but that they, you, they have one width of elastic that they use and then they cut it down to the width that they need. I agree, Lisa. It really is a friendly group. I'm going to um, iron these now, all right? <clears throat> You're making bowl covers. That's awesome. All right, so um, let me warm up my iron a little bit. Just wait for it to, iron, to warm up. So I did my first uh, pass for the French seam, wrong sides together, about eighth of an inch. And now I'm just gonna press the seam one direction, doesn't matter which. It's just gonna make the next step a little easier. Like that. And then I'm gonna iron it along the seam right here. Did clip the curve. I feel like the clipping the curve will help so you don't get the puck like like a uh, stress on your seam.
You're making bull covers. I love that. You're usually shy about chatting, but you chat, Lisa. It's a nice group. You, ooh, cool, Terry. That's awesome. You know, they wrote cat. <laughs> oh, awesome. You're knitting a summer sweater. Yeah. I like what Mullen's name auto corrects too. <laughs> I'm glad you guys learned. I just um, redid my website. Um, I've been trying to redo it for two years and I finally just like, it all just came together. And one of the things I added was testimonials. And so I put some of the quotes that I've gotten in the comments and from some of you guys. <laughs> oh, really Pam, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so it was fun to like read back through all the comments and, and some of the emails I've gotten and I put them on the testimonials. All right. So you want to just encase that first pass. So you can tell I use a total of a little over a quarter of an inch and I know it ended up working for Cricut's Pear so I'm not going to worry about it. That looks pretty good. So now that we have that French seam on there and then we have this one. So that's why I say if you haven't cut your pair out and you want to do French seams, I would add a 3 8 of an inch to that seam allowance. Otherwise, the way you should uh, put these together is just right sides together, quarter inch seam, zigzag the edge or surge the edge, you know. Yeah, I, I, my name autocorrects to smarmy usually. <laughs> What you know, I won't argue with sometimes. All right, so now you're gonna put, so now look, you have your front shorts, you have your back shorts, and now we're gonna put the inseam together, this short little piece right here, and you're gonna do it wrong sides together. I'm gonna stagger the inseam so it's not really bulky right there. All right, we'll push this one this way since that one won't change. Wrong sides together. And then our next step is binding. And then the waistband and we're done. <laughs> Super fast. When I made the Lakeside pajamas, my binding machine was still hooked up. And those shorts, no joke, took like 15 minutes to make. I just bound the whole edge on the binding machine and then did the waistband. Couldn't believe it. Stop it. There we go. Here we go. A little bit. This is when you're joining your front to your back, basically. Uh, I'm going to trim this a little bit because you can see some of my juncture there is a little messy. We don't want those threads to poke out of the finished seam. You can trim them afterward, it's not as accurate, and you might clip your work. You know what I mean? Yeah, so this is, I think 5 8 inch seam allowance for a French seam is nice because you can do your first pass at a quarter inch and your second pass at 3 8 and that's pretty manageable, you know? Oh, nice. And um, these, the seam allowance is a quarter inch total. So I would add the quarter, another three eighths, and you'd get five eighths. That's why. Let me iron these really quick. When I put crates together, I didn't even I didn't even iron the French seams. I was I just did them so quickly. <laughs> Yeah, you can completely completely use pinking shears. 
I think that's a great option. Certain fabrics might give you a little bit of trouble over time. There are some times where I don't finish the seams at all, um, especially on bias cut items. I don't think I did on the, on the third Charlie Captain. They really last longer than we think they will. Finishing seams is relatively kind of a recent thing just because sergers didn't always exist, you know, and they were invented for, for knits. They just found they worked good for wovens too. Oh, you bought some linen for the um, free range? I actually feel like for once I contributed to sales of those, those pants. <laughs> Not that she'd know that, but I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> I have a pinking rotary knife that I use sometimes. I bought them like, I bought it like as a um, gift, like a little like 40% off coupon type thing. All right, uh, so here we go. Let's bind these. The fun part. All right, so you guys remember me cutting all the binding the other day. Now I'm gonna piece it together. Um, hopefully I can tell the right and wrong side because boutiques can be a little bit tricky. So when you're piecing together binding, you wanna find the ends that are exactly the same because those are the two that are gonna go together. Then you just lay them on top. That's the selvage, so I'm gonna back it off a little bit. Line it up on the seam line. And then I am going to trim these little points because they kind of bug me over time. And then it should line up. See that? It makes a nice straight line. So again, you want the piece that's the exact same angle as that one. And then um, I'm flipping. I'm kind of confusing myself because there's no right and wrong side of the fabric that's visible. Line it up on the seam line. You sew it at that juncture where the little V is right there. That's your seam line. Don't line it up like this. Because what will happen is your seam will start here and end here. And then when you fold it, it'll be, or when you open it up, it'll be misaligned. See that? You want to sew it at the seam line. I always say that, but I don't really illustrate how obvious it would be. I always cut these points. You don't have to. I've sewn a lot of binding. It's just a pet peeve. That's all. <laughs> the only issue with pinking shears is you can't um, sharpen them, you know? But they last so long. They're really great. And you can cut things out just with your pinking shears, you, and then you're finishing your seams as you go. You know, especially if you use a rotary knife on a table, that's pretty easy. That's really obvious where the right and wrong side is. Or maybe it's just lavender. Let's make sure I'm staying consistent with the right. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Look, see? Let's make sure we're staying consistent with the right side. This is why I like to do this. I like to roll it up as I go, kind of spool it. I think one of these is, is flipped. Let's see. It's this one right here. Each dish one right here. So we'll take that apart. When you have obvious right and wrong side fabric, it's a little easier, you know? Nice, that's great, Eliza, I'm glad. You, get, you can get them freshly sharpened, that's great. I think uh, I will pay for sharpening as long as it's done by hand. That makes sense, you can do it by hand. I, I never get my scissors sharpened um, by machine. I like them to take them apart and sharpen them. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely pay a little bit more sometimes. All right, so this is my right side why I did that. Now I can tell because I'm coiling it up and that just makes sense for me. Let's line that back up. You don't have to back stitch there. I am. So otherwise I get a lot of comments when I don't. And it also um, helps if I'm pulling. 
which I won't be pulling a lot on this one because this fabric is a cotton and it's pretty tightly woven compared to the rayon, which is pretty drapey. I didn't really want to bind in rayon, I will admit. This is the selvage, so I'm just going to cut it off. I told you, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to worry about cutting the selvage off when I cut the uh, bias for this batik, but I, I, I don't know why I said that, because I, I actually, I do. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You can send them away to do it. Yeah, there was a guy named Dan the Scissor Man that would come around and um, sharpen scissors. I loved it. And you just put them in the drawer at the fabric store with a with a check, and then uh, like the following week they'd come back all nice. Love that guy. All right, I think I have enough. If I don't, I can add. Let's find these. I might add this later to my little spool because I like having extra binding. I always end up using it. All right, so when I bind, I always start from the wrong side. I have a nifty little um, spool built onto my machine, so I'm going to set this on there, back here. All right. So you have this nice long curve. You're going to go up the side seam, around the hem up the other side and then you're going to do the same on the other side. So it's a lot of binding, I know that. Oh, you got the Ashton top? You know, I, I have been looking at that pattern, but I haven't seen a good back view of it and um, I really like seeing back views of tops. And because I did that willow tank, I feel like I have a tank top pattern. So, um, and I made three of them for my samples for the this class, so I'm like, I'm gonna wait till I get those back before I make any more tank tops. I'm not a big fan of my arms, I know. I don't, I, I don't like to like say things like that, but um, but my friend Brooke gave me wise words, and so I don't worry about it anymore. And um, but I still wouldn't mind more sleeved summer tops. All right, so. I'm going to push this one way. Let's see. This is the back. That's the front. This is the back. I'm going to put my push my inseam towards the back. I always push seams towards the back, and then that way also it's easier to remember. Oh. Wait a minute. I put those right sides together. What the heck? I checked that. I'm just going to flip this one, and then it'll be fine. I'm lucky that this is batik. I'm totally cheating here. That's so weird. I checked that when I put it on there that I had grabbed it so the, the right side would be down. Dang, I'm having a bad day. All right. This is the right side. Now I'm totally spooked. It's the right side. That's the right side. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it so it'll work. All right, back on track. Did I just do it again? Oh my god, if I did it again. <laughs> the, um, uh, that Brussels linen is pretty nice. It doesn't really wrinkle that bad. I'm going to open up my seam allowances. So in general, when I'm sewing binding, I do gently tug it a little bit. I'm not going to tug it too much on um, this fabric because the fabric differences are a, a little bit different from each other. They're a lot different from each other. but. When you're sewing binding, especially when you're gonna have to go around a curve like this, it's good to pull it a little bit. That way, when you go to turn it to the other side, it's gonna naturally want to round itself and fold under and lay flatter because you wanna take out some of the excess that is created by going around a curve. 
the other one now. Right side, to, right side to wrong side. I always start from the inside because you're gonna end up on the outside where your binding is gonna show the most. I always stop my sewing on the right side. <laughs> when I drink, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I think it's exclamation point drink, right? Yeah. Yeah, Nancy always keeps me on my toes with my seam ripper. She's missing out. Just open up my seam. Of course, I'm right there on this curve. In general, I would push my uh, seam allowance on binding to one direction and then clip all those little corners. Oh, Lennon and the Wixton would be nice. See, the Wixton's another one. I, I hadn't seen the back view enough without the belt because I like the, that dress without the belt. I like the belt too, though. It's cute. I don't think that would look, that dress will look good on me. I think it's cute, but I just don't think it's my, my style. I'm too short waisted for belts, you know? So I just kind of stay away from them. I need to make more of the dress I'm wearing. I, I really like the Dahlia. It's the Dahlia by Colette. This one's getting pretty tattered. It's in double gauze and it's getting pretty faded. I didn't even iron it today. <laughs> All right, so I have a little bit left over. You can trim some of this as long as um, you're not trimming off your seam allowance. You kind of want this to be nice and consistent. It's going to be the width of your binding. So if there's spots, especially around curves, that kind of poke out a little bit and you might want to trim them so that it's a nice, even width. All those little frayed edges are going to get encased. You can trim them if you like, though. I sometimes do because they bug me. And I want to reduce the bulk. Especially like where these seams are for the binding. Make sure that those are nice and even, you know. The ultimate shift. Oh, I haven't seen it. Oh, really, Malin? Okay. I don't use a belt with a Cali. I don't have a bias tape maker, actually, Wendy. Um, but you can get them. Clover makes bias tape makers. I don't. I don't use them. I don't really. I don't pre-iron. I just do it. I like just wrapping it around. It's the. It's fewer steps this way. So um, I sewed my bias to the wrong side. Now I'm just going to pull it to the right side. You can press it if you like. I don't. So I'm just going to uh, wrap it around, fold it under. And remember, if you to put that fold just past your first stitching line and then stitch to the right of that stitching line, you're going to land on the binding on both sides, right? Or just put your fold right up to the stitching line so that you, um, maybe I would fold, maybe I would iron this. This would be nicer to iron. You just want your stitching to land on the bias on the outside because really no one's gonna see the inside, you know? Oh, okay, tight armhole. You can lower the armhole I will say that that is one thing that I think it was Christy or maybe it was Malin that told me to do that on the Willow tank. Totally. I kind of want to iron this, this curve. I did it on crickets, but I, I definitely was like, eh. <laughs> Oh, I know what it is. This binding is wider. I usually cut one and three eighths inch wide binding. They have you cut, um, what was it, guys? Thanks, Tree Shepherd. <laughs> I am, um, this is my workshop, I'm not at my house. What was the binding they tell you to cut for this? It was wider than I'm used to. I usually only cut one and three eighths inch wide bias because I'm just used to that. 
That's why this is fighting me. Because I ended up doing it one and a half inch. I was like, all right, I'll do a little wider. I'll be adventurous. That that I should have just kept it at one and three eighths. Because honestly, this is I'm this is a little bit of a struggle for me. It might not be a struggle for others. I just use my awl to like poke it just past that seam. I never cut uh, sew in colored matching thread. I always sew in cream. <laughs> it's like a treat. Nice, long, straight spot. The binding is such a nice touch. It gives you an opportunity to use a nice contrast fabric. You know? And you know how I like binding. Everybody here knows how much I like binding. I have this extra thread here because that's where I start and stop that one little spot. So let's get rid of it. It wants to sneak out. <laughs> oh, so over. You raised the armhole. So what do you mean by you raised it? Like you raised it up here? So the bottom is raised, but top in the same place. Ah, oh, okay. I think I understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I just saw my bias tape makers. I thought I'd gave, given all my bias tape makers away, but I saw them the other day. I bought them probably um, 20 years ago. <laughs> I think they had just come out maybe. I don't know. I was working at a fabric store. Here's this pesky curve. So uh, the way I could have handled this curve a little better, besides ironing it, is um, using a wider seam allowance would have helped. Let's get rid of these little threads here since they want to creep out. I'll iron the other side to make it a little bit easier, a little quicker to sew. Not sure how I did on the other side, but we'll check it together. You can see all my dirty secrets. See how I did. All right, so there's the binding on one side. Show you how they look. So you see, this is the right side of the short. It's the wrong side. This is the right meaning as you wear it. This is the right side of the fabric, and then this is the back side of my binding. So you can see it's kind of, that's why you don't really want to pull it either. It'll kind of make your hem curve, especially with this lightweight rayon. So let me iron this edge here, and we'll do the other side. It'll be a little easier. <laughs> your food in your armpits. I saw that too. I was like, huh, okay. I know she means something else, but I couldn't put it together. Give this a little press too. This is why you don't want to pull it either. See how it's kind of doing this little cupping thing? Yeah, see that's uh, you know. Could put it on a little looser. So let's see, we'll do an experiment and we'll see if ironing is like gonna be the trick for that. I'll bet it'll help for this part. But you can see, like, see how when I put the binding on, it's standing straight up. That already tells me that um, it's probably gonna do that because this length right here is shorter than the length it's sewing to. So it's going to do that weird little curvy thing. If I were doing a fabric that wasn't the rayon, something that was a little bit uh, stiffer, 
It would help pull it. I gotta do it this way. There we go. There we go. Way easier. See that right there? That is gonna be the issue. It's gonna constantly do this little thing. It, it can't stretch anymore. That makes sense. Um, my iron is all the way up. <laughs> Cause I just didn't turn it down. Yeah, it's on the linen cotton setting. It is technically a um, natural fiber. No, no, rayon's a natural fiber. Uh, natural fibers can take high heat. Even wool can take high heat. The problem with wool isn't so much the heat that'll shrink it or anything. It's the, it's when um, water, warm water and, you know, is agitating it in the wash. That's when you get the problem. All right, so you see, this is what I was talking about over there. It's, it's going to do this little, like, cupping thing right there. I ironed the heck out of that, so it's not doing it as bad. And that's because, here, you can see it. See it right there? Doing this. That's because when you are putting on this bias, if you don't like really make it as loose as possible around this curve, the binding, when it goes back to sew it on there, is a different length than the curve. Yeah, Lisa. But you know, it's um, calling that and things like bamboo natural fibers is kind of misleading because the process that it goes through, um, is not natural. You know what I mean? It's not like a sheep to wool that you knit with. It's, you know, that is a completely, it, I, I liken it to food. Let me think of, I think if, if I can come up with a good description of, you know, food. It's like, like look at sugar cane, right? I mean, you think sugar is a, is a natural thing, right? I mean, it's better obviously than maybe a synthetic sugar. But what sugar goes to to be edible on your table is such a, a process that it's a actually refined product. You know, same with like flour. Flour, we don't take grains of flour and hand grind them and then use them. We process them differently. I mean, I have friends that do the, the like natural way to use flour. She's a bread baker, it's amazing. But um, it's, the same with, it's the same with clothing. I mean, fabrics. Bamboo is a natural fiber, kind of, but not, not really. They are man-made natural fibers. Yeah, exactly, Brooke. Yeah. All right, uh, so let's do this last binding. Man-made natural fibers, exactly. The way I liken it, like I say, to food, you know, and um, when I talk, like when people are like, this is natural, I'm like, could you make it in your kitchen? Like, I have a huge sweet tooth, you guys, and I don't eat perfect at all, but I do try not to eat a lot of processed stuff. I, this, I, I ironed this so badly right here that um, it's causing me, a, it's actually worse. I'm gonna iron it real quick. Jeez, I can't even flatten it. Let's see. Like I make my own granola and um, when I make my granola, it's completely unrefined. It's not vegan. Like I use butter, I don't use oil. I use honey, I don't use sugar. You know, that's the difference. I didn't make the honey, obviously, in my kitchen. A bee, a bee made it. But also, nothing's happened to the honey before it got to my table. That's the way I look at it. I could talk a lot about food. I don't bring it up a lot. <laughs> I didn't really iron this curve here. That's the whole point of me ironing over there, and I didn't even cur iron it very well. Mm -hmm. 
Like being uh, processed is different than being refined. Because you can put something in your food processor and it's considered processed, you know? I know, I did. I lived on a farm. <laughs> right, Leah? I know. I, I did. I lived on a farm. I've raised all kinds of stuff, all kinds of meats. Um, I've studied food. I've studied agriculture. Not in a school, but by books and by doing it. I've raised my own meat chickens for years. Um, and laying hens. <clears throat> Those are really easy, though. Except in Chico. I have bad luck here. I don't talk about it a lot because I feel like it comes off as preachy. When if you guys knew how I ate, like I have ice cream every night. <laughs> I like french fries. <laughs> you know, like I am not here to preach. I just like talking about food and how it's raised a lot. It's something I'm really passionate about and I hardly ever talk about it. I had an orchard for a while, um, loved it, a lot of work. Yeah, used to have sheep, wow. <laughs> what? So Malin, are you on vacation? Is that why you're in a little red cottage right now? Tell us about the little red cottage. Ida can't join. She's she's somewhere too, and she says the internet's not good enough for YouTube. I know that's supposed to be a vacation, not having the internet, but honestly, like laying around and <laughs> watching stuff is is very relaxing for me. All right, I think my shorts are gonna go way easier than these. The ran's not hard to sew, but picking batik to go with the ran, it's just not ideal, you know? They used to have sheep and chickens, aw. I used to raise sheep um, on a farm. They were for meat. They did use the wool of the females for wool, but um, it wasn't like fine fiber you know what I mean all right so here we here we are here's the back here's the front and now um, you know I was gonna measure I kind of just guessed when I made crickets pair where the overlap stops down here and I meant to look it up on the um, pattern on the website because I didn't print all of the pattern I just print out printed out uh, some of the, the, the basics of it no internet in your vacation world. I mean, granted, I like it when I forget I own a phone. And like two hours later, I'm like, oh, I haven't looked at my phone in a while. Um, let me look at this um, pattern and see if it's written on here, where how far you stitch down on the sides so I can tell you. Oh, here we go. Stop sewing when you reach the top of the curve of the bottom hem. So it's pretty up to your own judgment. And that's kind of what I did. All right, don't get fit confused, all right? I mean, one thing about the bias is the legs are gonna stay kind of away from the body, which I kind of like. All right, so I'm gonna um, center this on the side like this. Make sure you're going front over back. All right. Let's just look at where that curve stops. Starts cupping the cheek. It's about right there. I'm gonna do it about right here. Right, right here. And then um, this way, I'm planning it out right now. I need that little black thing. Um, I'm planning it out right now so that I can do the same on the other side. <laughs> it's hilarious. What does your 70 year old dad like to do on the internet? I'm curious. Not that I don't think he, he would use it. I'm just like, what's his favorite things? I really like, I really like knowing things like that. I don't know why. All right, so you're gonna overlap this binding piece According to the instructions, you center it over the seam of this one, right? And then you're gonna top stitch it down. 
All right, so I just got my needle in there. I'm all ready to go. And now I'm gonna line it up and keep stitching just like this. Make sure you don't catch the other short in there. Just like that. See that? Like that. Ooh, they're so slippery. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna do our waistband. And then we're gonna do this all over again for my pair. Oh boy, did you see what happened there? That little bump um, underneath kind of pushed my, pushed my machine off. Get that out of there. We do that. Didn't really like going back over the bump there. The bump of the other binding. All right, so we have some shorts. Could have done better with the pattern matching, eh? So these are the fronts right here. Okay, I'm gonna add a little piece of fabric in the back right now. So it's really easy to tell for Cricut when she goes to put them on since I do the, um, I did uh, the same fabric front and back and it's pretty subtle. I mean, it's a big difference when you lay the pattern pieces on top of each other, but when the back comes to the front, it seems a lot less and it's pretty easy to mistake. So I'm just gonna, on the fly here, do something. This is kind of what I usually do. I just put a little like piece of fabric back here. Bias doesn't fray, so it works really good for this. Let's check my rise. This one goes this way. And then this way it'll be easy for her to see. That's the back. Like that. And if it really bugs her, she can cut it out, make it shorter, and it won't fray. You know? So, oh, he reads the newspaper, genealogy stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, keeps up. You give up in her. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Melin, I think they're really fun to sew. That's what's really great about them, too. All right, so um, let's talk about the waistband. So if you are following along on the instructions, I'm gonna do the waistband a little bit differently now. Um, they have you cut the waistband four and three quarters of an inch wide, and then uh, they have lengths based on each size. So don't forget your waistband, and don't forget it in your yardage. Um, I, when I went to Sew Crickets, I had so much extra fabric in the width here and I couldn't figure it out. And then I went back and looked at the instructions and I was like, ah, okay, I didn't sew it the way they planned on having these sewn. And what they have you do, I'll just show you on this, is they have you iron it in half like this, open it up, and then fold your, your waistband towards that center fold so that your entire waistband is filled with fabric and use one inch elastic. So that, that would work. <laughs> right, Eliza, I know. Mine's getting long too. I feel like I am getting behind on a few things. I have my dad's shirt sitting here. I have some bunting I need to sew. Um, so I don't really wanna add all that bulk to the waistband. Also, I don't really like this much fabric flapping around in there. Even if the, even if the uh, elastic is pressing it down on both sides, it's a lot of extra fabric in there that can kind of wrinkle and add bulk and then make your elastic not come return to the waist size that you want. So that's why I just trimmed it down and mine is three inches wide. I'm gonna use like a three eighths inch seam. So I'll have plenty to go over the elastic and um, turn under and finish it, so. 
I do not know the seam allowance here at the center back, so I'm going to do about a quarter because that seems like what they did on everything else. The instructions are written like a blog post, so it is a little bit tricky to kind of sift through and find what you what you need. All right, let's hold it up and see. It looks small. <laughs> It looks small. Why is it too small? Shouldn't be too small. I didn't cut anything off the end. What the heck? Maybe I didn't overlap it enough on the sides? Weird, weird. Oops. I can probably make it work. But I don't want to have to make it work. Alright. I'm just going to walk it around. This is what I do. I'm just kind of walk it around there. I mean, and I used the wrong seam allowance at the rise, and it's still too big. Just kind of gently walking it. I want to see how much I'm off. I'm off by a lot. Look at that. <laughs> Why? I used the same pattern. I sewed this last night. Did I not cut the right uh, waistband? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the pattern pieces. That's so weird. Yeah, that's the pattern piece. <laughs> Maybe, uh, I don't know if I want to ease that much in there. But this is not the... Uh... Hmm, I might piece it together a little bit. Let's see. Let's see here. So I'm not, do I have enough fabric for this? I can't remember. I had, I had some extra fabric for this, right? I don't for mine though. What if mine do this? They may have you ease the waistband on, but that's quite a bit. much should we add here three inches three inches seems like a lot it'll be gathered up so the seams aren't going to be a big deal but it's disappointing it's disappointing I'm going to piece it together guys You know what? I forgot. I kind of, I kind of uh, positioned the um, waistband so that um, I, I could have the like print of it going. Like if I wanted, I forgot. And then I turned that off. It happened. So I'm gonna. This looks like this is actually where I cut this out, right about here. I'm just going to cut a piece. The width of my waistband. It's a little bit hacked. I know. Doing it at my sewing machine is uh, never easy. But we'll just slip this in there. Like, it did feel like I eased a little bit her waistband, but not this much. Maybe my fabric was a little short underneath when I was cutting it out. You ever have that happen? 
But I think we would have noticed that. We did it together. All right, so let's pull apart the seam. And we'll just slip this in there. No one will know. You guys aren't gonna say anything, right? All right. Let's see. Now I can't tell. It's a three by three inch square. We'll just straddle it on the on the back. So what are you guys doing this weekend? Are you guys, anyone sewing today? I know that Pam said she's making bowl covers. You know what I did recently was um, I got some of those beeswax wraps and I put zippers on them and, and they're so easy to use, I love it. I didn't, Brooke, no one asked. I was kind of wondering if anyone was gonna ask, um, but they do, do only go to about a 46 inch hip. The grading would be easy to imitate. Like I, what I would do is just imitate the grading that is already there, do a parallel line just like they did because of where they positioned the grading. Um, but yeah, I, I was waiting because someone asked that and I was like, you know, if you, I, I, oh no, no, someone didn't ask that and I just said, hey, if anyone wants that, just let me know. And um, so. All right, I'm gonna press this so it doesn't bug me. <laughs> we'll make it look a little nicer. Oh, sorry, Brooke. I'll help you out with it, though. Okay, that's better. All right, so I'm gonna um, act like I am binding the waist with the waistband. So I'm gonna sew it wrong sides together at about three-eighths of an inch. And actually, I'm going to mark my waistband. I'm going to mark my waistband so that I have center points for matching. My non-negotiable points. For matching to the waistband. There's no notches on this pattern, so you got to kind of add your own where you want them. There's no green lines either. So just do your green lines perpendicular to the hem of your shorts. So I just do these little triangular nips. Let's move this out of my way so I know where my ruler is, even though I'll still look around for it. All right, okay. So let's line up that center. Are you getting back on this time zone, Brooke? Poor Michael, um, he got home late Thursday night and um, he had to charge his uh, car. He has an electric car. He had to charge it and he got kind of turned around. He, like he, he enab enabled the navigation and he'd never left the airport from that spot. And for some reason he, he said, I got a little turned around and all the, um, like his like landmarks were facing the wrong way. Oh, bye Rachel. <laughs> and um, he got lost. He did, well, he didn't like, it was telling him to go the right way, but he mistrusted it. And so he thought he was correcting it. And then he got lost. And this was like, he had been delayed several times all day long. Um, he had flown in at like, I don't know, it was pretty late, like 11 o'clock at night. He was tired. And um, 
then he got lost. And so I don't know what time he got home. But when I looked in the morning at my phone, look at that, I nailed it. Um, I, I saw a text from him. He was sleeping right next to me, but he, I saw a text from him. He's like, I got lost. I'm on my way home now. <laughs> I was like, oh, such a bummer. I mean, he knows that area so well, knows the airport. That's why he mistrusted. He was like, this doesn't look right. And he was just leaving from a different spot. <laughs> So I gave myself a three inch wide waistband um, for one inch elastic and I'm sewing it this way. I'm making sure I'm not twisting my riser. That's why I keep looking down there. So I'm pushing it that way, lining up my center. And I kind of gave myself a half inch seam allowance for the waistline. I'm not using that right now because I'm gonna give myself enough to wrap over the elastic. And that way I know I won't accidentally sew the elastic because I don't do the safety pin thing. You can totally do that. I don't know why I don't. I think it's just all the production sewing. All right, here we are back at the beginning. All right, there we go. So I sewed my waistband right side to inside and now I'm going to wrap it to the front and close my elastic, top stitch it down and then we're done. So let me um, iron this. These are summery, that's for sure. It's my little uh, tag there. Push it down. Ironing so great. Okay, let's look around. bug cricket but you know you might want to stitch it down <laughs> oh no what <laughs> okay so let's see I have my elastic here hers is the shorter one. Um, I uh, really secure my elastic in the round a lot because it will get stressed, you know? You want to make sure that nothing's going to make it pop inside of your waistband. So I like to put it in there and then wrap it around. I'm gonna fold it over. I'm gonna stitch it down. I'm gonna do it a little bit tight. I'm gonna try and do it as tight as I can. So remember I have my anchors. See there's my center right there. So I don't get any torquing. And another good thing to do would probably maybe give myself another guide here. So I'm gonna fold it along this side seam, line up the waist 
edge for a little bit so I know I'm getting it as pretty straight up and down to the side seam as possible. Remember where I'm thinking that's going. So it's going to the, when I'm looking at it here, to this edge of the binding. Let's do it over here too. The more little helpful things you have, the easier it'll go in. I always do this. I always get going and then I'm like, hey, how about I add some of these? I'm having a rough sewing day, you guys. <laughs> I'm having a rough sewing day. Who knows why? <laughs> we'll see. Oh no, the car thing, yeah. I know, right? So sad. My husband goes to bed early, so I know he was knackered by the time he got home. And then we've been having this weird door thing, so I'll bet the door wouldn't open for him. He had to put a whole new like, um, like set inside the door handle. We kept getting locked out even though the door wasn't locked. So. All right, stop with your needle down so you can pull on your elastic like that. See that? Let's line up my, I'm trying, I'm having trouble getting my legs under me here. It's this rayon, man. I'm gonna line up this one right here and kind of pin it. Oh my gosh, I just, uh, I feel so fumble fingered today. I'm having a bad day. It's so weird. Shake it off. I'm stitching close. See, if I, I were to design this, I would probably, oh wait, this is the sewing fairy telling me something. See, look. Forgot about my little tag back here. Um, I would uh, sew this with the serger, but I would serge the elastic directly to the fabric. I really like that method because then it doesn't roll, you know? Let's start again here. Well, shoot, now I'm gonna just do it the, I'm just gonna do it the, I hate doing it this way, but I'm just gonna sew the casing and do the, the um, safety pin thing. Hi Lexi, how's it going? <laughs> I'm having a bad sewing day. Bye Pam, thanks for coming. Good luck with your bowl covers. <laughs> oh, you finished them? Nice. You made eight, that's great. <laughs> All right, let's, get, let's, let's just do this. See, the, the reason I didn't want to do it this way is because I really like the elastic to be uh, tight inside the casing. And when you have the elastic in there, you can kind of see it. I'm making the city gym shorts by like from the Pearl Soho website, Lexi. All right, see how nice that is? Look, no torquing. Completely finished waistband. So at least you can see it better if I sew it this way. Lexi works at Hearts Fabric, you guys. I think they're gonna send us more things to sew together. That watermelon dress looked really cute on you, Lexi. If you're still here. It looked so cute. My elastic won't fit there. This is why I don't do this, this method. This is why I don't do it this way. So I'm gonna tell you a few other ways to sew this waistband. So one, you can put the elastic in the casing separate, top stitch it down all the way around. Just top stitch it all the way around. Or, you know, 
you can make the casing and then stick the elastic in there and then you have your raw edge poking out and then sew it right sides together to your waistband and finish the edge finish the edge before you do that it'd be a lot easier that's one way you could do that do that without a, you won't have a, a completely enclosed waistband like we're about to have which is really nice but on this rayon between the rayon and the um the the elastic being so stiff it's just going to fight a little bit it'll look great in the end it's going to gather up really nice that's what's great about the rayon yeah i hope so brick i know i know the sewing fairies are um i yeah i don't know what's going on like I sewed a pair of these the night before last in 25 minutes, <laughs> really quick for my daughter. I just sewed them together. Today, the waistband was three inches too short. Like what the heck? So I cut a little piece and pieced it in there because it's gonna be gathered up. No one will see. I'm just taking out a little bit here because I can tell that the um, elastic won't go in this little narrow spot. That's so why when you pre-fold and pre-do your thing, you have less room. Let's see here, right here. It's just a short distance. <laughs> I just ripped my fabric. It is a bad day. I was just thinking, don't ever do this. pretty much my worst sewing fail ever on camera let's see oh yeah look at that <laughs> let's see can I fold it under right there will it fit in there no it won't fit in there it won't wow okay I'm kind of getting to that point where um, maybe I need a whole new waistband You know what's really funny? When I was putting together all the testimonials for the my website yesterday. <laughs> Thanks, Lexi. They're for my daughter. This is so her, this fabric. Um, when I was putting together the testimonials, one thing that popped up a lot is I like that if you just make a mistake, you figure it out right there and you keep going. But, you know, like when you're sitting here sewing live and you're making a mistake, all you're thinking is, oh, no, everybody thinks I don't know what I'm doing. And... Um, they're not going to watch anymore. They're not going to hang out with us. That's all I think. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, I mean, I make bad choices in sewing too. <laughs> yeah, Terry, right? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, like I'm, I could, I could just piece this little piece right here. Just like I did on the other, other side, you know, it's near the front. It'll almost be symmetrical. I could cut a new waistband out. I obviously have enough fabric. I could use narrower elastic. I'm just giving you options if this happens to you guys. You could um, use narrow elastic and a narrower waistband and cut that little piece off. Um, what else could you do? There's a few other things you could do. You could, if you were no fabric, you have no fabric, you have no other elastic, you're desperate, you have some iron-on interfacing, you could patch it it'll be fine just put the iron on interfacing over it if you have only wonder under put it in between and put a piece of fabric on top of it patch it visible mending you know it's just going to be less visible so yeah I think I will do a little inset you know because I have so much fabric We really need to do like a, a fix it stream, you know, where it's like, all right, if this happens to you, I just can never think of all the things that we might want, you know, I don't know why I just can't other, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a pattern drafting stream. Hi, Nancy. Yeah, you did. Look, I just seam ripped her hole. Maybe it's because you weren't here, Nancy. <laughs> My scene ripper fairy. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. Right, Melin? Exactly. And you know, the thing is, like, this is why I say sometimes, like, 
If you were in the garment, like people get really hard on themselves when they're sewing. They think that they're supposed to sew it perfectly the first time they sew it. And the thing is like people in the garment industry, they get to sew a bunch, you know, before they even go to the production floor. And even in the production floor, when they start teaching them, they're like, all right, just do this and then do this. And then, and then they kind of get their legs under them. So it's like they get 15 tries, you know, you don't get 15 tries and you've spent $30 on fabric for a little pair of shorts, you know, so be nice to yourself. It's okay. I'm not selling these. And honestly, my daughter is, you know, if she's watching, she's going to know that this happened. But she's not going to know otherwise because it'll be scrunched up in the waistband. So I just need a piece uh, this big with seam allowance. Right? Exactly. Been there, done that. Here, we'll just lay this here. I should have started on the other pair because they're cotton. Not that Rand's that hard to sew, but you know. Why is this not the same width? Is the iron shrinking it a little bit? I'm eyeballing it. I'm fully eyeballing it right now. Let's get rid of you. I'm gonna true it up here. Oh, did I? Oh, I cut that little piece off. That's probably what it was. Okay. Oh, no, no. It's there. It's there. Seam allowance, seam allowance. All right. Let's get rid of a little bit more. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> the crappy sleeve binding was still intact. What do you mean? Oh wait, oh, you decided to rip out a sleeve binding. I was happy when it was done. I realized I ripped out the, oh. I have done that, Nancy. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, I have so done that. I've done that on camera with you guys. Ripped out the wrong one. <laughs> That's sewing fairy, man. She's a bee sometimes. I'm really, I'm patching this. I would never, I actually have to say that if if, the, if I was just doing this by myself, I probably would have taken the waistband off and cut a new one. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm not. It's because now I'm spooked about using the seam ripper to take the rest of the waistband off. I need to remember that I am the boss of this project and stop letting it have so much power over me, you know? It's not quite big enough right there, but I think it'll be okay. I'm just gonna use a little bit, slightly little bit smaller seam allowance right here. And take that out. I'm not liking my back tack on this rayon either. It's the thread's too heavy. The needle's probably, I think the needle's actually okay. It's the thread. The thread is too heavy. So it's kind of, it's kind of a slappy back tech. Some of them are okay. I just needed a little extra there. There we go. I can hear a really cool bird outside. I heard, I heard some critters in the yard last night that I've never heard before. Yeah, I was saying the same thing, Nancy. I would, I, I think that's a good idea. I actually have some here. I almost did it, but um, I'm not going to. I have enough fabric, you know, so. <laughs> you can write a list for a problem day. Okay, Lisa, I, I'm down for that. Maybe that's what I should have you do. I want like, um, let's do a, a, a sewing mishap stream. So tell me, your problems. Let's make a long list and I'm going to write them down. It, it's hard because when you start thinking about it, it's like, oh, what if I run out of fabric? Well, what pattern is it? You know, there's things like that.
Okay, like it never happened. <laughs> yeah, they will be cute. I think so too. All right. So, let's see. I'm gonna iron this real quick. Make it look like it never happened. It does have a look of leopard to it, doesn't it? Let's just iron the waistband while we're here. kind of pre doing a little bit I just want to make sure it's wide enough for my elastic here you know that's barely wide enough right there you gotta get kind of used to what it's supposed to look like you know Here's my little mishap area. We'll just we'll just iron it. <laughs> I know, right, Christy? I know, totally. She, I actually made her a sample pair, Christy, and she, um, she wore them a lot, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And she even popped in the stream today, which was pretty cool. All right. This is why ironing is so great. It kind of pre sews it for you, you know? Now, um, the thing is, like, I think there's someone right now watching the replay shouting at me, why does it have to be so close to the width of the elastic? That is just a personal preference. It doesn't. It really, it really doesn't. You know what I mean? Like, you can have the casing be a little wider than the elastic. That's fine. For me, I really love the way uh, elastic looks when it's tight on the elastic and the gathers gather up really nice and it's not very floofy, you know? The other thing is you run the risk when it's not um, fitting well to that the elastic will twist. And we all know how we feel about twisted elastic, right? In fact, I think the Perry Mae Cricket, because she was turning down the waistband so much, it did make it twist a little bit. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if it was just that or it was just that she had one, the front rolled down, the back just um, had popped up for a second. <clears throat> but you can anchor your elastic in like strategic places, you know, like the center front and the side seams. Just make sure that it's like evenly distributed before you do that. And I'm doing this on the right side of the garment so that I know what it's going to look like. And if you're not, this is such a great place to practice this kind of stitching because the gathers of the elastic are going to kind of hide any of your little imperfections or you're piecing together like we kind of had to do there, you know? Like right here, I'm getting a lip, I think because I ironed it. <laughs> It's a little bit, ah, 
I missed. It's a little bit, um, a little bit too flat. Might get a little tuck here. There we go. Whew. Get rid of our thread. Oh, I need to leave an open opening. That's why. <laughs> we <laughs> we need. <laughs> oh my God, those pair of pants. <laughs> I should have just. I got the tab back in there. I need to watch a video on how to sew these. Uh, oh my gosh, these are cursed. This stream is not staying on the internet. This was the sewing fairy right here telling me, um, hey, yo, you need a spot to put the elastic in you keep talking about. So um, here's a reminder. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you serge your elastic to the waistband, you don't actually have to tack it down. It will never roll, but we all don't have that option. So. So we use a casing and this, this is like I did this in the first shot on Cricut's pair You can a little bit Malin, but really you compromise the um, Elasticity if the fabrics too thick and that's why I got rid of So much of the fabric in the waistband Because the thicker it is the less it's going to oh, I'm gonna catch a thread there My off camera, sorry Yummy. Yeah, me God, this is back stitching over my back stitch. Well, you know, she gets two pairs, I get one, right? Maybe my next pair will be good. Maybe I won't need to sew them. We'll have a long, uh, <laughs> long enough stream. All right. Now I need a safety pin. Let's see if I can find one. I think I saw one on my pin cushion one day, but that might be at home. Oh, I do have one. Great. Good. I found some uh, one and a half inch wide elastic for um, my uh, next pair of free range slacks. So that's cool. <laughs> you guys are troopers, stick, troopers sticking with me today. On the on a positive note, I uh, redesigned my website <laughs> and I launched it. And I'm pretty happy. Like I finally got that done. I'm I need to tweak some stuff on it, but I'm so glad I finally just got that done. You know, it looks a little better. All right. So with all my little seams, the piecings, this part's not going to be as fun. You know. Oh, I have not done this in years. The bodkin won't work for this because it's a, or it's not a bodkin. I call it a bodkin because that's what my um, instructor in college called it, but I learned later that it's not a bodkin at all. That loop turner that I have, it won't work for this. You can't do it in a circle. It has to be open-ended on both sides. If it were maybe flexible, you could, you know. If there's anyone live on Twitch, just know that I'm t I am live talking people on YouTube. So I stream on both. I, I don't look at the streams to see if there's viewers. 
I look at like a unified chat window. So I do remember when I used to do things like this, I used to do a lot of elastic uh, wasted things when I was first sewing, and just in general, I just liked them. Um, if your elastic is about the same as your, or much shorter than your tunnel, make sure you secure the other end, otherwise you can lose that end in there. Yeah, see that casing is a little too small right there, I can tell. Right here, a little too small. I'm watching the end here, I don't wanna lose it. Uh, so for the cutting the elastic, I should mention that the instructions do have a um, recommended amount. But I went by Cricut's measurements. I kind of knew that these would sit where she would like them is kind of her low waist. So that's kind of the measurement I used. I love that word too. Exactly. Oh yeah, your So Society box arrived. Cool. Yeah, what do you think? Look at the gathers, it looks pretty good. Oh, it's fine, it's not, spot isn't too small, it's good, it was just really gathered there. All right, so let's secure this right here. And then we're done, and I'm never gonna look at these again, except every time Cricut wears them. <laughs> Don't catch the elastic in there. Just making sure I'm not catching my elastic, but I'm not getting too far off that little seam right there. video unboxing. Are you going to do it on like Instagram? We want to see. Okay, so I'm just kind of evenly distributing these uh, gathers. Let's light them on fire. <laughs> they look cute though. I'll show you where my seams are for the panels. Oh, there's one right here. There's two seams here. And then there's um, my repaired areas are right here. This is my center back, and then that's my center front. So can't even tell. They look really cute. Yeah, so if you want to secure your waistband from um, potentially rolling, what you're going to do is make sure that your waistband is straight up and down. Make sure it's all evenly distributed. You know, you got gathers all the way around like this. And just go straight up and down on your side seams. Do it at your centers as well. Just like that. Non-roll elastic is not a guarantee, by the way. So you could do it on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, I know these are cute. They turned out really cute. That's the thing, is like once you're done, it's all okay, you know? You just gotta get there. That's why I say you just gotta finish it and wear it. I saw a thread somewhere, but I can't find it. 
All right. So that's the back. Good thing I put that. I can barely tell myself. There we go. Those are cute. That, you're right. That does look like leopard print. <laughs> you can, I think. That's why you asked that, Brooke. I'm curious why you're asking that. Um, yeah, I'm going to have picture, Cricket take a picture. I'm going to, because she goes and watches Sunset almost every night. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Someone just gave me $20? Oh my God. That's amazing. Thank you. Wow. That's, you do not need to do that. That's crazy. So Streamlabs does push that for me a lot. They're trying to get me to set up all that stuff to, for donations, but I didn't know it would show up. I was just trying to figure out how it worked. Wow, 41106, thank you. That was very nice of you. That will definitely go towards the stream. That's very cool. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if it's just with Twitch because that's a YouTube thing. Yeah, so I just set it up in there today. Like I literally just linked that today and I was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Nancy, if you, um, you, yeah, I just saw that. I didn't, you know what? I didn't even read that. I'm really sorry. I didn't read that notification right away. I'm not used to that. And, um, it, uh, I thought that was one of my automatic ones that Streamlabs does and I didn't read it. So I apologize. Whoever you are, I don't know your name, but thank you. <laughs> Okay, well, I think Cricket's gonna really like these. They do look like leopard print, Nancy, you're right, especially like this. Should we make my pair? I'm a little nervous now. <laughs> but at least if these go better, I can just say, if you're watching this video on replay, just skip to whatever this time is and watch the second pair. Unless you really want to feel good about seam ripping right into your garment. Because <laughs> you're not the only one that does that. I'm still bowled over by that, so thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry I keep cutting my fingers, you guys. I'm an absolute klutz. I feel like every time I come on stream, I have a band-aid. Yeah, doesn't it look like Cheetah? Okay, so this is the funny thing about Cheetah is um, I, uh, if Craig gets watching right now, she's gonna be like, mom, don't you dare. My, um, my daughter's pair word. I did a practice pair, Nancy. Okay, so yeah, let me show you guys that have joined late the picture of my daughter wearing the muslin I made. And you're not gonna be able to hear me because I didn't set up the microphone there. So I'll show you the picture and I'll explain it, okay? So those are the pair I made for her in like lickety split. And then she rolled down the waistband on there. That's why I shortened the rise on these about an inch all the way around. And so my daughter, when she was, I think about first grade, was so into cheetah print that she, um, we let her pick out the carpet in her bedroom when, when we got carpet and she picked out cheetah print carpet. So I kid you not, my daughter had cheetah print carpet. <laughs> it was crazy, it was nice carpet too. Um, and then for her school picture, I have the most adorable picture of her wearing cheetah print leggings, cheetah print shirt, cheetah print shoes, and a cheetah print headpan. So, cause you know, my mom was like, oh, she likes cheetah print, let me find it all. And she would. And so she would wear cheetah print head to toe. And she went as a cheetah and she had like a little cheetah skirt dress for Halloween and I made her a tail. And then she put the tail on that outfit. Yeah, so it was pretty, it was pretty cute. I was always indulging the dressing things. I, I just didn't care about that kind of thing. At first I was a little bummed that I couldn't pick out her outfits when she was little, but I got over it. I mean, she was wearing this princess dress for months that, I'm not going to lie, it was painful. But, um, you know, she that's what made her happy. <laughs> All right. Wish me luck. I'm not going to need it, right? Okay, so uh, we're gonna do French seams again, and this fabric is a little harder to see the right and wrong side. So I'm gonna do the wrong sides together. 
try and do an eighth of an inch. This is a cotton lawn. It's a little stiffer than a cotton lawn. Oh, you know what I wanted to say? The, um, that Myrna dress I made, you guys, the one that was like deep maroon with the little birds on it. I don't even need to iron it. Hi, Ida. Yay. That's awesome. You miss all kinds of drama. You're here for the good pair, I hope. <laughs> A blurry video would have been good. <laughs> I hope your trip's going well. Thanks for joining us. And happy summer, everybody. It's like the second day of summer. All right, so French seams on the center back. I'm gonna iron these now. It's not quite hot, but it's still working pretty good. So I iron, I just push the seam to one side and then I iron it right here on this fold. Makes the French seam so easy. Did I clip, did I clip this one? Maybe not. Looks like it might be okay. I love this print. It it looks a little bit like um, like the lights in um, buildings from far away. <laughs> I know, right, Nancy? <laughs> yeah, I feel like when uh, my daughter did that, um, it wasn't common to see that. I didn't see a single other parent, and I actually had parents give me dirty looks. Um, I lived in a really liberal area too, so that was kind of surprising. Um, I, I had people comment, op like, like in front of me with, um, but like to their friend, but loudly so I could hear them. I can't believe she would let her daughter wear that, let her daughter wear that in public type comments. My daughter, man, you guys. She, she has her own mind, you know, like she's always had her own mind since the, right before she turned two, she stopped letting me pick out her outfits. Um, I couldn't brush her hair. The only thing I ever won on was the fact that I said, if you're not going to brush your hair, you can't have long hair. Bye, Nancy. Ooh, that'll be really fun. You know, and, um, I just said, you have to have long hair because her hair would get so tangly. You have to have short hair. So you had short hair for until she was in like first grade or second, first, first grade. So yeah, I, and um, and then she uh, got attached to a different little dress and that little dress was like this little knit dress my husband had bought at Target for like $10 and it was cute, but it was knit. So the knit got so dirty, her belly, cause you know their belly stuck out? Her belly got so dirty and the back of the dress looked ba brand new. And I was washing it like every day, you know? I was like, oh my God, this thing. So it's just, you know, like whatever. It's just clothes, it's just a phase. It's not like they're gonna dress in a princess dress forever. And you know what? Some women do and that's okay too, right? So it doesn't really matter. It's not my life. It doesn't embarrass me. <laughs> I, I just found some little threads. I was just taking care of them on the outside there. Sometimes I take a chance and pull the thread. Um, these are a lot of the rayon threads from that last thing, probably because they were on my ironing board. All right, let's do the um, inseam. I think as parents, it's really hard to remember that 
your kids your kids may em- embarrass you by doing something rude or unkind but they can't embarrass you by doing what they want to do with their own things you know it's like that's them it's not me and I, it's hard to separate ourselves and a lot of parents have trouble with it you know so I'm just like yep that's what she wants to do it's not me you know it's like it's so funny when teenagers get embarrassed by their parents and I just think well you know I didn't get embarrassed when you would you know ask me if I went number two in a public bed bathroom in front of everybody no actually I would get embarrassed by that <laughs> but I didn't get embarrassed when she wanted to wear you know her Wizard of Oz sparkly red ruby slippers with everything or even her jammies you know Ooh, it's a midsummer celebration that's awesome with that you will drag yourself away <laughs> yeah That does sound really nice. All right, here we go. Here's the inseam. I just finger pressed that. It's so short and this fabric is pretty crisp. So it worked really good. Not like that. The rayon is a little bit whooshy. Oh, there are so many of these little rayon threads everywhere. They're not on my table either, so I'm not sure where they're coming from. My shorts are bigger. All right, let's put the binding together. At least this time you can see the right and the wrong side. So like I say, um, when it's like that, I just cut it off. Right, at least I won't get it twisted this time. Brooke, I loved seeing your handmade outfit on um, in Paris. That was pretty cool. Oh, that's so cute, Terry. <laughs> that's awesome. My friend Kirby has started a little business and she's making bags and she makes bags specifically to carry Mickey Mouse ears, you know, like the headband style ears that um, people wear. They're cute. I didn't know it was a thing. But she's like, yeah, people like to keep their ears, like she likes to keep her ears um, nice when she goes to the park. I don't have ears, so I was like, oh, okay. Um, my daughter has some from the 50th um, celebration but they wouldn't write her name on the ears because they said we don't do nicknames that's awesome Brooke handmade every day I need to make this dress again because I'm outgrowing this and my also my Chantilly dresses um, they between them like slightly shrinking a little bit a few more times after me making them because you know how things kind of shrink a little bit more and more as you go um that and me getting bigger it's just not very comfortable but i love that dress i love both of these the chantilly and the dahlia Typically, um, so it's funny that both ends of this binding are, it always happens that way, especially when you cut it on a fat quarter. Both ends weren't, neither but one was a good choice. I did that at a little bit of an angle so I could get that juncture back on track. Yeah, I know. Brooke just went to uh, Paris and Lyon. Pretty cool. You guys were cramming in so much during the day. It was so weird when I saw you say something about your personal account. I'm like, how do I not follow Brooke's personal Instagram account? Oh, it's a dress, Christy. It's the Dahlia dress by... Um, 
Colette patterns. I should make one. I, I, I need another one. It's um, got a little midriff. So you see it has a little midriff. Someone's knocking on my door. Oh, hey, I'm still alive. Hopefully he's sewing better now because I had a pretty miserable failure with the cricket shorts. Did you bring cricket? No. She could try on the shorts. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I got a goodie. Is your kitchen in the single set of No. It, uh, I have water. Oh, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> all right, I'm almost done piecing all my binding together. I'm going to do all of it because I'm going to need a little bit more than I needed on the other pair. Speaking of treats, Brooke, what, what did you eat when you were in Paris? 13 miles, three days in a row. Oh, my gosh. I hope you ate all the croissants. That is always funny, like we will look at our apps at the end of the day, how many miles or steps we put in. No joke. All right, I'm gonna hope I don't need that little piece. Maybe I'll use it for my back, for my label. Oh, did you guys see the fold line? Um, do you guys get the fold line newsletter? So they had, I've been trying to figure out some labels and there is an ad in their current newsletter for um, sew-in labels, woven. They're really affordable, custom, up to nine colors and there's a 10% off coupon in their newsletter. So I immediately t checked them out and it's gonna be like less than 50 cents a label. So, all right, so let's do this uh, wrong sides together first. I almost did that wrong, here we go. I can't see the fabric. What do you guys think is binding? Is this gonna work? I think it'll work. Yeah, did you see that, Chrissy? Did you open it yet? Sometimes I don't open them um, right away, you know, but if you're looking for labels, you might check it out. I'm going to try them. I'll let you guys know how they are. Did you find the water? Oh. This woman stopped by my office yesterday looking for the other folks and because she was picking something up. And then she was like, well, what do you do? And so, you know, I had to tell her the whole thing. And then I went over there looking for them. And then there's other tenants here too. And they don't know anything else. You know, they don't know what, what the, the people are up to. And they were like, yeah, we get some interesting people that just stop in sometimes. And we are like, we're just the tenants, you know? So, um, chatted with her for a while. She wanted to know everything I did and everything. And then she gave me a frog tape measure. That's hilarious. You pull on the eyeball. <laughs> it's really funny. All right, let's put all these little like raw edges to the through there. Thank you. It's nice that iron top. Careful. That's exactly where I burn myself. Is always on my forearm when I reach across it. So. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Should we see what he brought me? He got a new car, so I think he really likes driving around. Let's see what he brought me. I gotta make him something next month, you know? My dress is uh, woven and it's double gauze. I actually really like the double gauze. Um, I didn't iron it today, uh, except for the pockets. Um, cause it's kind of, it's kind of relaxed. It's kind of a, it's kind of like casual feeling like linen and kind of like bouncy that way. So let's see what he brought me. Oh, it's a, a banana chocolate smoothie. So look at the new clean canteen 
That's where he works. Brand new. It's crazy. All right, so let's do my other side. I'm trying to do a little bit rela more relaxed on my curve, you know? What if you, Lisa, what if you tried gray thread? Do you have some shades of gray that, um, cause gray tends to be very chameleon-like. It's kind of my backup. I use cream for everything or gray if I, I don't have a thread that color that matches. You kind of, it's like someone taught me the cream trick and um, it's true. It really, it really works for a lot of stuff. I only to people that would ever complain at Chicken Boots would be like, how come you don't match the thread, you know? And it would be really rare. And I'd learned that they were a really avid sewer. So I thought it was really interesting. But you know, we don't change thread. We did for certain things, but not, not for a lot of things. I'm gonna press this the same direction. I did save my uh, fabric info. It's handy for once. Huh. I like the new top of the, oh, you're talking about the cup, right, Brooke? Um, the new top is amazing. It, it's, um, I, I haven't really liked the the sippy style cap. The it's called the cafe cap um, for a while. In fact, I used the old style that's not leak proof. Um, but this one is is pretty cool. This one has a straw. Oh, this isn't the straw lid. The other straw lid. So the new straw lid that there's going to be on here, you twist it and the straw goes inside, and then you to untwist it and the straw comes up and it's leak proof. Like you can toss it in your bag. Um, and then the same with the, the sippy cafe style cap is the same way. It's leak proof and it has a loop so you can carry it from the top, which right now you can't with the current cafe cap. I like this new side, this, this, so all of the cup stuff is on the inside of the cup. See that? So it's not on the outside, it screws on the inside. So these little subtle things you guys probably never notice or think about when you're buying a cup, but because he works there, we talk about it and, um, and talk about the ins and outs and stuff like that. But that's kind of nice, It'll, it's uh, more secure, longer lasting, which is, they're all about sustainability there. So they're out this summer. Um, apparently and that new straw cup the only one i've seen is a prototype uh it's like what they're showing in their booth and stuff so those aren't out quite yet but i think they're delivering this summer yeah they're really great they're a, a good company too because there's a few companies out there that um they're pretty big but they're they're not that great that's all i'll say <laughs> and i wish clean canteen would actually expose them for some of the things they do but they're just not that's just not their style Especially the stuff they do overseas. <laughs> but you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> they're also a B Corp company. If you ever looked at B Corp com companies, they're really great companies to buy from. You have to go through a lot of certification. Okay, let's, um, let's iron this because that was so great, you know? Because we like ironing. doesn't look like anything's on there, but it, it, I keep getting all these little orange threads. We're gonna have to do a mother-daughter photo shoot. <laughs> You can fully line these um, and not have to do any binding. Then you can even make these reversible really easily by the way the uh, waistband is sewn. I'm not a big fan of reversible things. I think they're kind of 
Like no one ever reverses things. <clears throat> what they could come out with is like a line of underwear for uh, guys in their 20s that are reversible. There we go. I, I, the, like my iron has no water in it. Bye, Christy. Have a good weekend. <laughs> All right. Let's do this binding. It does look weird for me to sew binding with colored thread. Not funny. I'm so conditioned to do the, the uh, cream color thread. So let's see, we're gonna talk about our uh, sewing, like a sewing fail stream, right? We need like fixes. Let me think about that. Um, I don't have something set up next week. I think I might do pattern drafting. I might do like maybe some, I'm gonna do my t-shirt and then maybe some alter, altering um, patterns to do, do something else. So let me think about it but I need more pattern drafting in my life. <laughs> Honestly, don't. I'm actually working on all those other patterns right now, but uh, I like it. All right. Let's see here. Mine are a little longer. I should have checked the uh, waistband. I'm kind of, I didn't check it to see if I'm gonna have any issues like I did with Cricut's pair. That was so weird. It's only weird because I sewed the other pair and they were fine. I had to ease them like an inch. And I just thought, ah, that's my seam allowance. Oh, oh, oh. Bad day. I'm not even looking at the chat, sorry. <laughs> did I, did, I sewed a lot without you guys, wow. Like, I feel like I need to restream this whole pair of shorts. I don't know if I wanna sew these anytime soon. <laughs> exactly, Brooke, I don't. <laughs> When you get to those curves, make sure you pull the fabric away there. <laughs> Sorry guys. I don't know why I don't feel out of sorts or anything. I feel like things have been going really smooth. I think it's because um, normally this is our third stream of the week lately and I'm thrown off. Like it doesn't even feel like Saturday to me. It feels like Thursday. <laughs> Try and look more often. I think I'm gonna stick to one and three eighths inch binding. It's just my wheelhouse, you know? <laughs> Brooke, I like that you were commenting both in Twitch and in YouTube. On my screen, they show up next to each other because I, I have something called display unified chat and it unifies all the chats of all the places I'm streaming, which is only two. But I think there's two other places I could stream on Facebook and something I've never heard of before. I don't remember what it's called. It reminds me of that Lisa Loeb song. It's a bad day. <laughs> I think a lot of folks are gonna have trouble with this little curve in the binding. Try not to stress about it too much. Remember that your binding's gonna show, your, it's only gonna show from the outside. I know, right? It is, we are having a heat wave here. 
Oh, it has a less of a delay. Yeah, I know. Twitch does have less of a delay. It's nice. This is uh, pretty thready for... I mean, the looser woven stuff is not surprising if it's going to be thready, you know? So when you're getting around that curve, don't sweat it too much. Um, you could probably press it a little bit more if you like. Um, clipping it isn't going to help a whole lot, but it might. You could clip the curve a little bit. My problem right now is maintaining the width of my binding because I'm so used to the one and three eighths width. That extra little bit's kind of throwing me off and I feel like my width is not very consistent right now. So the dots are kind of covering that up. It could be an optical illusion even for me, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit narrow in other places. But like this curve right here, it's my last one. You know, the thing is you don't really need to uh, clip it because it's laying flat. There's nothing stressing it out. And, and the uh, binding is, I mean, let's see. We'll, we'll clip it and we'll just see if it makes any difference. It could because the binding is having to stretch a little bit. Because see now, like you can see my little clips are spreading out. Try that if you're having trouble sewing your curves on your binding. Let's see if it'll help. I still feel like it's going to feel like a curve. So yeah, next week I think I'll do pattern drafting. Um, I'd like to do some altering patterns stream um, and I'd also like to draft something. So. What would you guys like to draft? Or oh, we could do grading too, but I feel like grading, we might want to work up a little bit to the grading. I don't want to scare you guys off. But I know it'd be really useful. Like, are you more interested in sleeves? Are you interested in making a sleeved garment into a sleeveless garment? Um, we could talk about that. All right. Don't 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 get confused with your shorts. All right, so let's figure out where the um, side seam kind of straightens out here. Gonna lay it on there. I don't really want to go this low because I don't want to hinder the opening. They're not very revealing so it's gonna be okay I'm gonna stop here and then um, mark your other side so that you have the same side seam length I'm gonna trim all these puppies here one more I might wear these I have to admit, this is just not my style. You know who, who you know who suggested we sew these is Julia, and she's not here. Well, she could be. Are you lurking, Julia? Bottoms and sleeves. Yeah, I know. Um, I think like eventually, once we've had a few pattern drafting things, and um, I kind of get the hang of how to teach it. Because you guys, you know, I know how to do that stuff, but I feel like I do a lot of things without thinking and I want to make sure I give you guys good information and not forget things because I feel like at, right now where I'm at is I could show you how to do something and then think of three other things afterward that I should have illustrated and um, I don't want to do that because pattern drafting is kind of important that way you know so those are the back right and these are the front is the front. Let's put my back little tab on here right now. But I think eventually I would like to have a uh, how to draft your own bodice. And then I would teach you how to change it into things. You know? 
Uh, let's see. This is the front, that's the back. I'm just making sure. Yeah, and we can work up to pants too. I think doing a, a stream where we just go over how to alter your pants for all the the um, fit issues that people talk about. It kind of pains me to stitch this off of it. Because you, you center, I'm not explaining how to sew these on this round because we talked about it so much on the, um, on the first pair. Um, but uh, you do straddle this binding over the seam of where this one is ends right here. This is how you're supposed to sew it like that. See that? So it's centered. Kind of pains me. I really want to line it up like that. <laughs> Ready for it. these look huge. I made the biggest size and now I'm kind of wondering. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are gonna be way too big on me. <laughs> I think these are gonna be way too big on me. <laughs> I wanted more fullness around the, the bottom and the booty. <laughs> Cause when I looked at the hashtag, they looked very slim fitting. And someone commented, she goes, I just made these, but I don't usually have a full seat and I feel like I need a full seat adjustment, you know? So um, I was like, see, that's why I cut the bigger size, but I do feel like this leg, I mean, if my, you know, maybe, maybe it's just an optical illusion. We'll see. I didn't make a muslin for me. All right, let's wait. Let's, uh, let's look at my waistband on here right now. Yeah, the pants altering I think is gonna be great. And I think um, we'll do some pants this fall, like before fall maybe hits, so that we're ready, you know what I mean? For like pants weather and stuff. So I was thinking um, maybe maybe that would be a good like one year anniversary stream. We could do, hi Dina. Um, we could do um, like altering pants patterns. Yeah, Short, shorts are altering. What do you what do you mean by shorts altering, Lisa? Do you mean just like um, like transferring all that that pant info to making a pair of shorts so that we can make it kind of seasonally appropriate? Or are you just talking about making pants into shorts? Or are you talking about altering like the length of them? I can interpret that so many ways. So yeah, you can actually draft a bodice flat pattern style with your measurements. I will say, I feel like I've done that once or twice for people and it came out meh. So I think starting with something is a good idea um, and then finding that starting thing. So that's why I was thinking maybe I would come up with a block um, in multiple sizes and then you could take that block and alter it so that's your basic block and then you use that to make it into other patterns, so. I've just got, I have to get some of these other patterns done. Oh, alter dress. <laughs> exactly, right? I know, right? I, I mean, I guess I could overlap them more on the sides. You know? I'm gonna leave them for now. These are my muslin. Brooke is always, yeah, I just drew my big shorts. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. It's a timing thing because of the because of the video, I know. Brooke always gets things before I do and she's always like, uh, Sarah me. She's always telling me. <laughs> things go over my head a lot. It's so funny because I'm such a teaser too. I can't tell the right side from the wrong side of this fabric. This is the right side. That's the wrong side, okay. I'm such a teaser and I'm always telling people, I'm just teasing, I'm just teasing you, I'm teasing. 
you know um so it's kind of funny that sometimes i am so literal i won't i won't get the joke you know i'm like oh okay you know another waistband option you could do if you really wanted to gild the li lily with prints and stuff is um, you could bind one edge of your waistband the edge that's on the outside or on the inside doesn't matter and then um yeah they might become good sleep shorts exactly yeah you can't really mess around with the crotch too much like that you might get into bigger issues lisa i wish it worked that way it would just create something else all right because i seamed my waistband together i have my natural center points but i'm going to make those my side seams like this and i'm going to mark the center another so i'm basically dividing my waistband into quarters right now i just nip it like this so it's really visual make sure i get all layers yeah yeah exactly the inseam is also uh finished already i mean yeah and taking out the rise makes it deeper if that makes sense the rise is a tricky little beast to deal with hi kirby how's it going how is that game i downloaded it is it fun what do you think a bit closer to the side mm -hmm. yeah i think um i did did they all downloaded i i don't know if all of them know about the new wizards unite um yeah exactly lisa um you could i could just like as a quick and dirty fix overlap this more that would take out some volume <laughs> what of course i downloaded it my husband said, did you see that Apple email with the Wizards game? And um, I thought that he was saying, we just got a receipt for an app that you bought. And I know you didn't buy that app. So why did, why, who's buying apps other thing? And I was all, uh, wait, why are you asking me that? And they're like, what do you mean, why am I asking you that? Have you seen the email or not? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> we were having this really funny conversation. He was like, there's a new game. I'm like, oh, I don't get the Apple emails. Hi, Kara. How's it going? Yeah, awesome. Hagrid is in your living room. That's awesome. Um, basically, he was just trying to tell me, hey, there's a new game. I'm like, oh, yeah, I already have that downloaded. <laughs> I haven't, I'm scared to open it. I'm scared I'm going to get sucked in big time. But the, the trailer for it is so cool. It's not in Europe yet. Oh, it's made by the same people that did Pokemon Go. So it should be pretty fun. All right, so I'm gonna do this um, right side to wrong side. Start on the inside of my waistband again. Put that little center notch I made on the center back. Try not to, uh, you know, catch my little ribbon I did. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So I made my waistband a lot narrower than what they suggested. I made mine three inches wide. Um, I didn't want all that extra fabric in there. I wanted the waist, the elastic not to have any issues with me when it gathers up, so. Oh, that's awesome, Kirby. Hi, world peas. I used to know someone who had a, like when I lived in Boulder a long time ago, the, the popular um, bumper sticker on cars was visualize world peace. And um, we saw one once that said visualize world peace. It was pretty cute. That's probably very old news, I know, but still. At the time, it was cute and clever. There's, this fabric's really thready, so I'm just trying to get all the little threads into my seam allowance. Then I don't have to trim them all, you know? You're in Denver, nice. You're only an hour ahead, I'm in California. These gals are all over the world. It's pretty cool. 
<laughs> I'm assuming there's a lot of gals watching. I know guys watch too. Now look, my waistband's too big. What the heck? That's where it came from. Oh, you're in Denver. That's where it came from. I oh, got it. <laughs> See, I'm a little slow. <laughs> I'm having a bad sewing day. I'm just gonna just gonna tell you right off the bat, things have been weird. Look at this. Now my waistband is too big. I don't get it. Last one was too small. This one's too big. I'm going to check the pattern. So, you know, if you guys are making this, I would check the pattern. Oh, is it going to, maybe it's going to work. It's going to work. It might just be what I overlapped with the side seam was slightly different. So I'm just going to make it work here. It's close. See? Not bad. That's fine. That's fine. I would check though before you start getting to this point. So I'm just going to, I just sewed it with like a little bit under a half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to fold it to the right side. Okay. This is a cotton lawn. Let's see, I actually kept a little piece of it. Let's see. Uh, by Wyndham. It's not the drapiest lawn I've sewn with. I like the art gallery. A little nicer. Uh, the Rayan shirts we just made, which were an absolute freaking struggle for no reason at all, um, just because I was having a bad day. You would have quit long ago, Lisa. I have to have certain success, and then it, and then I feel good, you know. But these are these are gonna be a little big on me. I can tell. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna iron the waistband. And I won't forget to come back to you guys this time. I promise. This is the inside of the shorts. So we sew to the inside and then we'll go to the outside. That way we won't have to worry about how they'll look. It'll be perfect. Let's just fold this down and um, iron it the rest of the way. These things are, <laughs> they're colorful. This doesn't line up with that because the side seam is actually um, forward on the shorts. And I pieced together the waistband because there's not a waistband pattern piece, so you have to kind of make it yourself, but the yardage isn't quite enough to make a whole waistband. This pattern's really great. It just has a couple of little things you just need to know ahead, ahead of time. It's interesting that this looks narrower than this. All right. This isn't the way they have you sew it. They have you sew it a little bit differently. But I didn't want all the extra fabric in my casing because it'll hinder the stretch of the elastic. Plus it just, I don't know, it was unnecessary. All 
I remember this time. <laughs> You are doing chores while watching. I do the same thing. <laughs> you're with, um, oh, you guys are, you're, that's awesome. You guys are together. I love it. Oh, yeah, the translation between centimeters and inches, I know. <laughs> it's past bedtime for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's in Europe. <laughs> All right, let's stitch this down. I'm gonna start a little bit of ways from my center back so that I remember, hopefully this time, to um, stay away from the center so I can put my elastic in later. So I'll just start off center. This is the, I'm stitching on the right side of the garment here. Gonna check my elastic so that'll work just need to make sure I maintain that like a that <laughs> I'm wearing the Dahlia dress by Colette I should make one we made like so many dresses last month I feel like I gotta give you guys a break from them but it is one of my favorites I really love it I have a bunch of them um, and they're getting all a little bit tired looking, you know what I mean? I've had them for a few years. It's really hot where I live, so, um, finding nice sundresses. And I found this amazing strapless bra. I've never used a strapless bra in my life. And, um, I found one last year and it's changed like all my dresses for me. It stays up. I'm wearing it right now. It stays up. It's pretty comfortable. By the end of the day, I'm a little done with it. But um, for the most part, it's really great. I, I love it. It's I love it better than my regular one. It's just not as comfortable. It's a little stiffer. For long wear. I can tell I might get a little twerking, so I'm trying to pay attention to that. Why did I make the bigger size? I made the bigger size because I could tell these look like a little bit slim fitting. And like Brooke said, this would be a good jammy short. I wouldn't really lounge around the house in something like this. Yeah. Yeah, she's in Sweden. <laughs> a few of you are, aren't you? Wait, where are you, Ida? I mean, I know, Ida, you're on vacation. What do you like to sew world peas? What kinds of things do you like to sew? We mostly do women's clothing here. Um, I'm gonna do some men's next month. It's my husband's birthday coming up. I'm gonna make him a, probably a Fairfield shirt, I'm thinking, um, by Thread Theory. She even offered to give me the pattern. I'd already bought it. So I thought that was a really nice gesture. See, I'm pulling a little bit and this is when torquing can happen because I'm a puller. That's one of my little things I do and I shouldn't pull. So when I get close, I start lining it up and making sure like, hey, this is non-negotiable right here. I gotta make all this bit right there. All right, we'll leave that little bit open for the waist, the elastic. <laughs> There's a little bit of slack there. Oh, because I've been pulling it. <laughs> yeah, right, my husband, also known as Harry Potter, same birthday. I'd rather him be known as JK Rowling sometimes, you know, just saying. <laughs> I'm kind of enjoying doing this the old school way, putting with the, with the uh, safety pin. You know, sometimes you just got to do what you know is going to work. But yeah, his birthday's the end of July. You know, we're, I know my family is going to go on a vacation, you guys, too. I just don't know when. We don't even know where this year. So, uh, 
I, I will be gone. And and um, I don't think I'm going to stream over 4th of July weekend. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that. Which one is it? Do you know the name of the shirt, World Peace? We may have made it. And, we, and there might be a video already, which would be kind of fun. I love it when someone says, you should make this. I'm like, we have. Here you go. Now you can sew it without waiting for me. Not that you guys wait for me. A lot of you are like, ooh, we're making that. Let's do it. And you guys just jump on. All right, so when you're putting your elastic in there, just make sure your elastic's not going to go right into the tunnel. I cut mine pretty big. You didn't know it? Okay. Well, that's okay. Trying to make sure my elastic doesn't twist. It's bunching up right there because there's so much fabric. I'm almost to the other side. Once I can attach it together, it gets so much easier, you know? When I can attach it to itself. I wonder if you take that game, um, Kirby, to um, Universal Orlando, if there's extra stuff. Oh, kind of like a halter top, huh? Um, boy, I don't know any home sewing patterns like that. I know there are some, but not off the top of my head. I don't think I've made any. I, is the Dahlia? I don't think the Dahlia comes as the top version. This, this pattern gets overlooked by people because the pattern on the envelope is, it's just like the pictures on the envelope are, they're kind of meh, you know? And um, they uh, make a sleeved version on the, it, the one on the pattern cover is a sleeved version, which I, I don't think is nearly as cute. I'll get the pattern out and show you guys. You guys, when I show it to you, you're gonna be like, oh, I've seen that pattern before. Just making sure I haven't twisted my elastic before I stitch the heck out of it. Um, Kirby, these come, um, <laughs> these come in, um, they go up to what's, uh, I think the hip was a 46. I, this is the largest size. I, I know that, um, there will be a little bit big on me, but I did that because, uh, they look kind of slim fitting. This pair is not looking slim fitting. In fact, the waistband elastic is looking massive, even for me. Like that's going to be a little too much. I don't know. It's kind of low. I wanted them kind of low, you know? I know, Kirby. I got one of those emails from them saying, hey, uh, don't you want to plan your winter vacation? And I was like, yeah, I do. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so I just, I've just been evenly distributing the gathers all the way around the waistband like that. That looks twisted right there, but I think it's just sliding. Let's see. <laughs> See that? There we go. Okay. Make sure we got it all the way around. Um, and then I'll, I'll tack it on the side seams and stuff. And then I'll, I'll show you my dress when I stand up and I'll show you that pattern, the way it looks. I would totally be down for making one. I mean, I guess you could make this into a top version. There is a midriff though on it. So you'd need maybe like a, a peplum that comes down from it. You know, I feel like um, Colette would be a good place to find a halter version. All right. This is my <laughs> thing instead, instead of a tag back there. So I know the back. They look a little big, but they're low. They're a uh, high. Um, I could live stream from Adam Milcom's. I mean, if they let me do that, oh my god, probably wet my pants. With like butter beer, instead of water sitting next to me. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I got the gathers pretty, 
distributed. Let's uh let's secure it down a little bit better here. So what do you guys think? This pair went together a lot easier, eh? <laughs> I had some bad luck on that first pair, man. All right. They look like, they look like boxer shorts, you guys. <laughs> and here's Cricket's pair. Let's change the, um, let's make the coloring a little more accurate. I don't know about your um, computer, but, um, these look a little, I kind of dulled them down. They're more like that. I put that, that's kind of where it, kind of, kind of, kind of, let's see. Yeah, yeah. They look cute. Let's see. All right, so yeah, see, it has a midriff right here. It's not a, a halter. I can't, um, I wear halters, they hurt my neck. Um, but here's the pattern I'm wearing. It's the Dahlia. And if you see this in a fabric store, it's probably deeply discounted because they're discontinuing all their print patterns. So I haven't worn these shorts before. I did make a trial pair for my daughter. Daughter, She's uh, 16 and a half. She's pretty slim. I made her the, the smallest women's size. And now I will show you pictures of her. Let me show you. Whoops, not the iron. So um, that's the um, pair that I made as a trial for her the other day. Um, and I took an inch off of the top all the way around for this pair. Because she folded. In those pictures, she's rolled the waistband down. And she also slept in them and wore them all the next day. <laughs> Hi, Holly. How's it going? Well, you missed some drama with the orange pair. The blue pair went like that. They were a charm. So if you end up wanting to make these and you want to watch um, this video, start with the blue pair. <laughs> but I do explain things better in the orange pair. I just, I had some really bad luck with them. Had some weird little things happen and made some bad choices. So. <laughs> So yeah, so these are for her. They're, you know, it's nice. The waistband's fully clean. You could make these reversible. Let's get rid of these threads here. Um, you can make these reversible pretty easily, actually. If you just lined the shorts, you can even sew around the hems instead of binding them. If you finish the waistband like this, clean finish it the way they have you do it or the way I did it, you're going to have a reversible pair of shorts. Not that you need a reversible pair of shorts, but it's kind of fun, you know, to be able to see that, say that. <laughs> so this is the, um, I don't know if you would call it extra, extra small, uh, but it's the, this is the 34 inch hip pair. And this is the 46 inch hip pair. Um, I measured for the 42 inch hip pair. Um, but, um, I made the bigger size because when I looked at the hashtag for the city gym shorts, they looked kind of slim on people. And even someone commented on Instagram, Hey, I just made these and I don't usually have a full seat, but these make me feel like I need a full seat adjustment. If you need to do that, uh, the quickest, dirtiest way to do that would be to lengthen the back rise. I'll show you. So if you need to add some room in your booty. The dirty, quick and dirty way to do that is on your back short pattern here, like this. So here's your back short pattern. Here's the rise, right? Here's the inseam, here's the waist. You're gonna add a little bit up here and a little bit right here, like this. The correct way to do it would be actually to slice in all the way to your side seam, but not through, up to the seam line, and then open it up like an alligator mouth. 
and then blend that line in. That's the proper place to put it, but you can do the quick and dirty method by just adding a little bit at the top and at the bottom. That's not going to um, most likely affect any of the rest of the sewing. You may, just make sure if you add a lot up here that you still have a right angle at the waistline. You might have to blend it in a little bit. Yeah, the binding is, binding is always making it, right? Yeah, so um, just in case she's watching, I just wanted to mention that. I don't know if that's one of, I can't remember who it was that said that, but um, she asked and I said, you know, I, I don't think I could explain it here. You can Google it. There's tons of stuff I Googled it, um, but that is how you do it. You just add a little bit to that back rise strategically. So, but I would look at the, I would look at the hashtag and see it on all the people and kids because it does fit kids and women. Um, these are both the women's. I didn't make a kid's pair. I thought I was making a kid's pair. I did not end up making a kid's pair. My daughter's just outside of that range. The kids go probably up to a size like 11 or 12, and then it goes to the women's. I might be wrong about that, but yeah. But, but yeah, they turned out, um, maybe we can take a picture. If, they're, if these are just too big, but I wanna salvage them, what I'll probably do, take the waistband off, overlap the side seam, put the, and put a new waistband on there, or I'll just donate them and make another pair. <laughs> it's a great stash busting project. Um, I, you can use different fabric for each piece. You can do a different fabric on the front or the back. It's a free pattern on the Pearl Soho website. I'm not paid by them. Uh, one of our viewers just suggested it last week. So that was um, a good find, you know, because it is summer, right? So, and um, let's see, do I have the pet here? So this is black and white, but it looks kind of like that. My printer is all messed up from printing shipping labels <laughs> for years and years. <laughs> so sorry. When you print thousands of shipping labels in color, that's what happens to the printer heads. It goes up to 11, yeah. Yeah, so there we go. So next week, um, I'm most likely gonna continue my uh, knit t-shirt project. Um, I'm just probably gonna alter it so you can kind of see what I'm gonna do for the fitting because they are fit issues that a lot of people have. And then we'll probably do a better, more thorough style pattern drafting stream, um, like, like a, a topic with lots of offshoots to it next week. I think it'll be really good. I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I've had a lot of ideas to hear what you guys say. Yeah, you're welcome, World Peace. Thanks to uh, 4106 for my first donation ever too. That means a lot to me. I really wanted to tell my husband, but I, I I'm gonna tell him when I get home. <laughs> that was really cool. Um, so you can find me on Instagram at so so live. I do this just for fun. I'm just figuring it out. It's almost my one year anniversary. Uh, it's almost my 100th episode. I better figure out when that is because I think it's really soon. And I really, I really love doing this with you guys. It's super fun. So we had our first sponsored stream recently with Hearts Fabric. I think they're going to be back to do some more. They they already picked out a couple more to send to us, so I'm really looking forward to see what they send us. I think I know the patterns. I think they're going to be really fun, and I think you're going to like them. So that'll be cool. We'll see, right? And let's see what else. Um, oh, and check out my website, especially if you're new. If you want to look at what projects I've made, and it's because it's really hard to navigate YouTube. I know. I hate it too. All the live streams are uploaded afterward. They live on YouTube. I, um, at, uh, within a day or so, I organize them in a playlist, but they're usually misorganized until I do that. But I have to wait till it's done uploading, that's why. And you can find them by project on my website, which is soso.live. And then you can see the links to every pattern or every video to it's like part one, part two, part three. You can see my notes, what size I made. It's really concise. It's not wordy. It's not a blog post. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it just says what size I made, what fabric I picked, what modifications I did, um, a, a brief description of the pattern, the links to the videos, and then I have a, the longest thing I have it potentially is the notes at the bottom, what I would do different, how do I feel about it, and I do keep that really short. So you guys are welcome. You guys are all saying thank, thank, thank you. You're welcome. I love sharing my knowledge. So I'm just trying to get my chicken boots patterns uh, off the ground so that we can have that done. 
maybe think about some other patterns, figuring this out together, right? So thanks. Thanks, you guys. So look forward to the pattern drafting streams next week. We'll see what we're going to do, and I'm looking forward to that. So have a great weekend. Enjoy the weather, and I hope it's as warm as it is here to wear a dress like this. <laughs> and I'm in air conditioning <laughs> so <laughs> have a great weekend you guys I'll see you by Thursday at the latest I'm always here Thursdays and Saturdays 11 a.m. and if you're new subscribe and click the little bell if you're on YouTube and it'll tell you when I'm live it'll just say hey so so live just went live I stream live on Twitch as well so it looks like I am talking to imaginary people sometimes and um, oh I wanted to say one other thing about that um, yeah, yeah, so subscribe and say and do the bell. Oh, because sometimes I stream before Thursday. So, hasta semana, iguanas. <laughs> hasta la semana, iguanas. And don't melt. No, ice cream, watermelon. I live ice cream and watermelon. I won't melt.